G'day folks, Andy here, Andy's World Journeys. Here I am in South Korea, in Busan. We've got some amazing stuff to check out today, like this place. Let's do it. Here we are on the Busan subway line one where we're going to take a bus to Bayo Mayo Sa Temple uh, for the first stop here of my second Busan vlog. Uh, and while we are on the subway, I thought I would let you know one little thing that's uh, kind of important, I think. And that is when you are buying your tickets for the subway at the uh, ticket machines uh, that you need to use either a 10,000 or a 50,000 won note. Even though the tickets are between 1,700 and 1,900. So uh, you get a lot of fives and ones in change that you then can't use to purchase tickets, which is kind of frustrating. It's about a 40 minute ride out to Napo from Busan station. One more station to go, folks. Then we've got to catch a number 90 bus. Nopo station. Nopo station. We are heading to Nopo station or Napo station. Don't listen to me. What do I know? Very little. Anyway. Nopo. I mean, that's good news because it's hard to miss the last station on the line. And riding around Busan, signs and announcements are usually in Korean, English, Japanese and Chinese. And their tickets give you a little QR code. Uh, which you scan in and out, but you get to keep the ticket, which I like. I like to catch the number 90 bus. I want to catch it with no fuss. Now I've got a super duper busy day and I, I did consider taking a taxi but the bus only supposed to take 12 minutes so seems a bit pointless because what could you say five minutes maybe and they go every 15 minutes it's uh, 1700 won and it looks like you need to have the old exact change so it's gonna be an issue coming back <laughs> maybe a tap card's the way to go if you're spending more than a, a day or so like I am in Busan then probably a tap card is the way to go using those machines mentioned that we are a long way from central Busan to get to this temple. Uh, after that hopefully we're heading down to uh, a large park where you can take a cable car and see another temple. And then who knows? Ticket. 
interesting here to say this is probably a cemetery. Wow, look at these. Uh, well, presumably gravestones. There's one on a tortoise's back, another one on a dragon back. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Folks, here we are. Bomosa Temple dates back to the 7th century. That is the head temple for a certain Buddhist order here in Korea. I think it's the John Ye order, but um, I wouldn't be quoting me on that. And I apologize as I most likely got it wrong. temple in an impressive and high location. So up here we have a prayer hall, but um, no photography allowed inside. And I think, I think it's best if we just leave people to their prayers, to be honest. There's a whole sort of village here. So, It certainly feels like it's festival time. Super duper beautiful here, there's no doubt about it. As a monk goes about his daily business. Okay folks, I've just ordered an Uber taxi here in Korea. We uh, are similar to Japan, the taxis uh, link in with the uber system that's uh, the ubers that you get and already on the way three minutes away picking us up just here and we're going to gum gang park where there is a cable car and somewhere in there we're going to find us a temple too uh, here we are there's a little cafe just down from the temple and uh, we'll meet him just over here thank you very much Good morning, good afternoon. No, still good morning, just. Here? This one? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, folks, 
hopefully this is the best entrance for the cable car according to my taxi driver there are many entrances to Gumgang Park and just check out all the apartment buildings here in Busan wow these all look brand new too in fact they look like they're still building them How much? 11. Thank you very much. Well, it's not exactly bustling here and um, it looks like there's only like two cabins on the whole ropeway, which is interesting. And the infrastructure looks, uh, well, it's not the most recent cable car, is it? There's our journey ahead, folks. Top of the mountain, folks. Ish, almost. Now we're up here because I have chosen to go to the Sok Bolsa Temple, which uh, looks absolutely amazing. It looks like it's got rock carvings and lots of awesome stuff. So all we have to do now is find the trail to said temple, which should be around here somewhere, probably up that way, I would think. And um, and then we'll make our way to this temple. About a 30 or 40 minute walk is what I am led to believe. Now I am reliably informed that Southgate is the uh, direction we want to go. Okay. So I, I did go online and uh, I was told, well I found, a, I found someone who'd been there before and apparently they said to follow the signs to Southgate, which I think is the Southgate of the temple. So hopefully we don't get led astray. And hopefully, tracks, tracks in good condition. Must be uphill a bit, it's only 1.2 kilometers. If it's a 30 or 40 minute walk, that can only mean one thing <laughs> it's uphill. Just passed a rather confusing sign back there that was all in Korean and had, uh, had different measurements written up, or suddenly 2k away, uh, which means it got further away. But then I just passed a nice chap who was out here hiking and he said I'm going in the right direction. Suk Bulsa, here we come. And it is an absolutely beautiful walking track. The trees are sheltering the wind. It's not quite as humid as it is down there and boy is it humid. 
in Busan. Okay folks, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little concerned that I'm not on the right track. I, I don't know if I missed a turn off that was obvious or what, but I've been scrambling over rocks, which I wasn't expecting to do. Uh, and now we've got this steep uh, decline here. But look, as far as I can see on Google Maps, I'm heading towards the temple. So um, as long as I'm still doing that, I'm okay, I guess. And who knows? I don't know if you can see just through the trees there, but all the tall apartment buildings of Busan, it's, uh, it's kind of surreal. And just as I said that, I hit a fork, fork in the road and people are heading this way. And well, that's good news for me, I think. Out of nowhere, we've come to some steps. And over here, a view of a different part of Busan and a lot of wind. Hopefully, only 10 or 15 minutes more. Okay, well, we're going down these stairs. I just passed a lady who's coming up them, so good on her, look at this. Um, that's a lot of stairs. Uh, I think I'm heading in the right direction, but it's really hard to say. Uh, she was sort of saying no to me at times, and I think that was about my pronunciation. And she says, sok bu sa. So like, uh, harsh, say it hard, I guess. <laughs> oh, whatever. Goodness me. And this is, this is a fair view too. Alrighty folks, just up there, this is my like fourth time trying to film this shot, is a sign that says Siokbuk Temple, in English, I'm not going back to film it, in English, one kilometre. So we've got to go this way. Uh, I've probably gone 2K further than I had to. I probably should have been there half an hour ago. Whew. This looks like a devil of a path. But um, I'm going to concentrate on my hiking, fingers crossed, see at the temple. I mean, I'm totally hacked, but it's a pretty impressive trail. Now in Japan, they just have a, they probably have some sort of escalator. Zero point five k. It's been downhill the whole way so far. But I feel like we're below the temple, so cheapest. And just a hundred meters on from that five hundred meters sign is a road. And apparently the temple just got further away. It's back to six hundred meters now. And this is where the climbing restarts. Well, up we go, folks. At least it'll be a much steadier ride. Oh, they're just taking the piss now. I mean, we're almost there, but God, how flippin' steep is that? And if anybody tells you, oh, doing this, this hike, you don't need to be that fit. I can tell you now, it really would help. It would really help me. That's a good sign, right? A building. And a vending machine. Well, folks, it wasn't easy, but uh, I'm here. And, uh, Wow. Look at 
looks like some sort of gargoyle on top of the bell. you've got the temple but it's really all these ancient carved buddhas into the rocks that is why this place is so special up there folks it's just a little shrine people are praying so i think i'll lead them to it and frankly this has taken a lot longer than i expected but hopefully still i can get to the last spot that i wanted to to finish this vlog this is a lovely spot here uh, it's just uh, super duper hard work getting here People have driven most of the way here and just had to walk the last little bit. In fact, there's a car park less than 200 metres from here, but, um, <laughs> you know, achievement. There's also lots of shrines, lots of little, smaller shrines. And people are going from one to one, praying. I often wonder what they ask Buddha for. Folks, here I am at our final destination for the day. It's called the Gamcheon Culture Village. And um, here's a little look, see at it. Wow, hey? Brightly coloured houses left, right, and centaur. So I hear you ask, Andrew, what the heck is the Gamcheon Culture Village? Well, this area used to be a slum, apparently. And in 2008, a group of students uh, set about decorating, painting, beautifying, if you like, the um, neighborhood. And uh, today, it's a tourist attraction. That's right. And uh, people go for walks and do scavenger hunts and uh, things like that in the local area. Unfortunately, I, uh, I lost just far too much time today getting lost in the mountains. The old name for Gam Chon is Gam Nae. The letter Gam comes from Gyom, which means God. The letter Chion is another Chinese character for Ne. There is another story that the place was called Gam Chon because of its outstanding quality of water. Hmm, there you go. It's a huge area, but let's let's just have a look, see at what it's all about. Oh, so you can collect these stamps wherever you go, looking for certain houses, certain places in the district. It's got a little museum here. As you can see, the paintings, the art. GoPro! Cafe up there. Certainly is. Look at these adorable little houses and they've got little house lanterns.
everything's closing up, sadly. Ooh. Then you get views like that with the sun, just right. A lot of greens and blues, actually. What a great little district. And community, you can feel that it's a community that works together. There's the Jesus Christ Church. It's not a very churchy building, I've got to be honest. Oh, we've got some serious cosplay going on here. Well, this does seem to be the place for the photo, doesn't it? It's actually huge, isn't it? It just keeps going on and on and on. You know, I wasn't even sure I was going to come, but I'm uh, glad I did. I think you should just stay here and watch all the selfies. GoPro! It is full of these places to uh, do selfies, which is actually, um, it's a real attraction these days. This is what people are, people are looking for. Yeah, no comment on whether that's a good or a bad thing, just it is. So up there, um, Lovelock, up there, that's where they, they put all their, their special locks to show the truth of their love. And write a, a heartfelt note, no doubt. If I film a little bit, oh, is yeah. that the show? Oh. Well, somebody's already filming. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've never had my portrait done like this before. I've always been to, and I thought, what the heck, Billy Beck. So here I am. And here's my artist. Unbin. If you're in Gamchon and you want your picture drawn, your caricature drawn, this is your lady. If you're wondering what's harder, walking up the mountains or posing, I'm going to tell you, it's definitely walking up the mountains. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't matter. There we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Been awesome. Okay, thank you. Cheers, thank you. Folks, that was Little Prince caricature. Little Prince, the Little Prince, they're sitting down over there where everyone's doing their selfie. The price there was... 20,000 won, so about 22 Australian dollars. Actually, no, that's what I paid, I tipped. Uh, so they're gonna charge me 18,000, so about 20 Australian dollars, about 13.50 US. So I think that's pretty good. Also, while I've got your attention, I've been using, um, I've been using Uber Taxi here in Busan quite a bit. Um, I mean, the metro system's quite decent, but it's, um, sometimes it's just easier. And it's, it's not expensive. In fact, I haven't paid for it. I've done three trips, and the most I paid was probably about eight US dollars for the trip. So I think it's a pretty viable way to get around, especially when you're in a rush and you get lost and you lose time. Well, folks, in this small protected room from the wind, because it is a bit windy, I might bid you you from Gamchon, Busan and I might say goodbye to Busan too because tomorrow I am due, fingers crossed, touch concrete, I am due to head off to the Korean capital of Seoul. What can I tell you? It's been a very interesting day and a half here. Um, 
I've had to fight the rain. Uh, I've got lost on mountains today, which has taken it out of me, let me tell you. Um, but you know what I got there. What a, what a lovely little spot to end on back here down in Busan proper. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. It helps to grow the channel, of course, which I'm always trying to do. And uh, if you hit that little bell, you get notified when the next one drops. Thank you once more. Take care wherever you are in the world. May the journey never end.